asbestos are grinding exceedingly slow. Here's that story. The raid on Mike Menhevar's home in Belmapan in May 2011 is one of the most glaring examples of police abuse to date. GSU officers stormed the home, allegedly failed to identify themselves, and then pumped 156 bullets into the residence. Menhevar's wife and children were inside when the bullets tore through the walls, and it is a miracle that they were not killed. Today, Menhevar is seeking compensation for the incident, but his frustration was evident when he emerged from court. Well, when the case uh, against them, it took three years and a half. A case without uh, no investigation was necessary to do, and it still took three years on us waiting for, it, for this case to finish. It finished. Now it's our to, the chance for us to go against the government and, and try to get compensated for what they did to us. But even so, it's still not picking style. It's still just fixing papers and papers. So I don't know how long, how, how many more years they want to hold us like this. Menhevar's attorney told us that they are surprised that the defendants in this claim seem prepared to drag this out as long as possible. Once the criminal matter was over, uh, it was appreciated fully that the constitutional rights of Mr. Menhevar and his entire family were violated. And um, not only were their constitutional rights violated, but the actions of agents of the government uh, placed their lives and the lives of their children in danger. When you have 156 bullets lodged in a residential place with children inside, I mean, that is no laughing matter. That is nothing to sneeze at. That's a very serious uh, breach of the right of the citizen. So one would have expected, and certainly in a more developed and transparent uh, country, or a country with a more transparent system, such a breach would warrant those in power to say, listen, we understand that wrong was done and we will come forward and do what is necessary to make it right. But that's not the case in this instance, and both Menhevar and his attorney are preparing for the long haul. You had a, a young lady suffering from epilepsy in her mother's bed with her mother at the time, all of whom had to seek refuge in a bathroom while shots were ringing out and flying over their heads. We had two children scurrying through the house, trying to find shelter and eventually winding up behind a washing machine in a utility room because agents of the state were, fighting, were, were firing indiscriminately into their home. Five dogs killed, chihuahua and a poodle. Man, listen to me, I would understand Rottweilers and pit bulls, but man, a chihuahua and a poodle, man, please. I don't know how things, work, how th things really work, but they're supposed to, uh, as soon as this, this incident happened, it was easy to find out that they were wrong in all the ways. So they're supposed to approach us quick, not wait for years, send somebody and tell us, guys, you understand that our force did wrong, blah, 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 and we wanted to fix this thing all the court. Nobody showed up to say sorry, nobody showed up to say nothing. So it just passed like everything is okay, but nothing is okay with us. The matter has been adjourned to the 26th. Mike Rodon for News 5. Today, Kieran Zib appeared in the Supreme Court for the third time since her arrest on July 20th on a single count of manslaughter. The Coast Guard officer